All right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. The name of the video is The Inconvenient Truth About the Democratic Party. The Inconvenient Truth About the Democratic Party. Let's check it out. Let's see where this takes us, guys. Let's jump into this immediately. Uh, let's go ahead and make it like this. Let's get it. When you think about racial equality and civil rights, which political party comes to mind? The Republicans or the Democrats? Okay, so this is the angle we're going. Um, it, what matters is the time, right? So racial equality and civil rights. Um, if we refer to like before 1865, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, the party of racial equality and civil rights would have been the Republican Party. Uh, Lincoln was a Republican. The Democrats were the ones who started basically the civil kerfuffle. Um, they did that. In fact, they were the ones that said that humans were um, basically they had the ability to be owned. Uh, Republicans were the ones fighting against the concept of that. But if we refer to nowadays, it's the exact opposite. These are not the same parties that they were. Um, in uh, 1965, there was a party realignment. Uh, there are going to be people in the comments instantly once I said that, that they're going to be like, oh, that never happened. That's a myth. That's a lie. It's not a lie, bro. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to say that. It's, it's not a lie, bro. Just research, I guess, right? Um, the conservative Democrats were the ones that were in the South, specifically. Uh, they turned into conservative Republicans. If you were from around that time, and your parents were conservative Democrats, what are they now? I mean, you could probably look within your family and kind of see how that, that happened. But in all actuality, um, the civil rights movement pushed uh, the same people who fought the same kerfuffle, um, fought against the concept of humans being humans, right? Uh, it pushed them over into the Republican Party. This is this is just something that happened, in fact. Um, has nothing to do with anything at all, but if you ask the question, which part, which person or party um, was the party of racial equality and civil rights, it, it matters based off of the era you're talking, you're speaking about, okay? Um, another, another thing is, uh, they were what's called value voters. Uh, they basically voted on the, the concept of morality, um, these were like same, I don't know, like if you're a man and a man, they didn't like that, right? Which people didn't like that? It was the Southern Democrats. It was the Southern, it was a conservative Southern Democrats. Uh, they call themselves conservative Democrats, value voters. Where are they, where are they now? Or where were they in 18, in 1965? Republican. They moved. Most people would probably say the Democrats, but this answer is incorrect. Okay. Since its founding in 1829, the Democratic Party has fought against every major civil rights initiative and has a long history of discrimination. Absolutely. The Democratic Party defended slavery, started the Civil War, opposed Reconstruction, mm -hmm. founded the Ku Klux Klan, imposed segregation, perpetrated yes. lynchings, Absolutely. and fought against the Civil Rights Acts of the 1950s and 1960s. Absolutely. And when, in 1964, when it passed, they left the Democrat Party. They were like, how dare this pass? And with the Republican Party. Yes. But all right. In contrast, the Republican Party was founded in 1854 as an anti-slavery party. Its mission was to stop the spread of slavery into the new Western territories and that right there is literally on their mission statement. That's accurate. With the aim of abolishing it entirely. This effort, however, was dealt a major blow by the Supreme Court in the 1857 case, Dred Scott versus Dred Scott Sanford. Sanford. Okay. The court ruled. The people, people versus property, people versus or slavery equals property or, or slavery or citizen. All right, ruled that slaves aren't citizens, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're property. The seven justices who voted in favor of slavery, all Democrats. Yep. The two justices who dissented, both Republicans. The slavery question was, of course, ultimately resolved by a bloody civil war. The commander in chief during that war was the first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, the man who freed the slaves. Another thing, if, um, just to kind of understand the switch here that people seem to say that as a myth um generally democrats won't ever fly uh the confederate flag the modern democrats understand this 
who is more likely to fly the Confederate flag in 2024? Is it Republicans or Democrats? Okay. Six days after the Confederate Army surrendered, John Wilkes Booth, a Democrat, mm -hmm. assassinated President Lincoln. Lincoln's vice president, a Democrat named Andrew Johnson, assumed the presidency. But Johnson adamantly opposed Lincoln's plan to integrate the newly freed slaves into the South's economic and social order. Johnson and the Democratic Party were unified in their opposition to the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, the 14th Amendment, which gave blacks citizenship, and the 15th Amendment, which gave blacks the vote. All three passed only because of universal Republican support. During the era yes. of Reconstruction, federal troops stationed in the South helped secure rights for the newly freed slaves. Hundreds of black men were elected to southern state legislatures as Republicans, and 22 black Republicans served in the U.S. Congress by 1900. The Democrats did not elect a black man to Congress until 1935. But after Reconstruction ended, when the federal troops went home, Democrats roared back into power in the South. They quickly reestablished white supremacy across the region, with measures like black codes, mm -hmm. laws that restricted the ability of blacks to own property and run businesses, yes. and they imposed poll taxes and literacy tests used to subvert black citizens' right to vote. Mm. And how was all of this enforced? By terror, much of it instigated by the Ku Klux Klan, founded by a Democrat, Nathan Bedford Forrest. As historian Eric Foner, himself a Democrat, notes, in effect, the Klan was a military force serving the interests of the Democratic Party. President Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat, shared many views with the Klan. He resegregated many federal agencies and even screened the first movie ever played at the White House, the racist film, mm -hmm. The Birth of a Nation, yep, yep, originally yep. entitled The Klansman. A few decades... And after that, uh, after this very specific incident, um, the Klan rose again, basically, guys, right? Um, like, guys, this, this video itself is extremely informative, absolutely. There are people who have no idea about um, the parties at all. They just jump in line and vote for all these other crazy things. Guys, both of the parties are absolute trash, both of them. Uh, they should no longer exist um, because they're just muddled with nonsense on both sides of these ridiculous parties, bro. Uh, there needs to be another party. There needs, to be, there needs to be multiple parties that actually have the ability to, to actually run and win, okay? Because uh, both of these parties are, are too... They're, they're too muddied, guys, because then situations like this happen, right? Where people that are, are she's telling the truth here, but she's not saying the entirety of it. Um, because you cannot put this on the same people that are running the Democrat Party now, right? Notice how every single thing she's saying is before the Civil Rights Act. She even started the video by basically prefacing that she's going to be talking about everything before the Civil Rights Act. I wonder why she's not saying 1970, 1980, 1990. It's a weird thing, isn't it? Personally, but um, <laughs> but that's the thing here, right? There's there's truth in this video, absolutely. All of it is, all of it is, uh, because she prefaced it, she gave it specific caveat, right? Um, so yeah, every single thing here is true. There's nothing that I've encountered so far that has just been like whoa. But it sounds like she's like a doctor or something, isn't she? Um, I'll go back and. and at the end here, um, but I would like to see exactly who, who she is and what's the, there has to be some type of like, I don't know, there's, there's something behind this video and I can't put my finger on it, bro. It feels very targeted, like, a, like I don't know, let's go. It's later, the only serious congressional opposition to the landmark Civil Rights Act of 1964 came from Democrats. 80% of Republicans in Congress supported the bill, less than 70% of Democrats did. Democratic senators filibustered the bill for 75 days until Republicans mustered the few extra votes needed to break the log jam. And right. when all of their efforts to enslave blacks, keep them enslaved, and then keep them from voting had failed, 
the Democrats came up with a new strategy. If black people are going to vote, they might as well vote for Democrats. As President Lyndon Johnson was purported to have said about the Civil Rights Act, I'll have them as voting Democrat for 200 years. So now, the Democratic Party prospers on the votes of the very people it has spent much of its history oppressing. Democrats falsely claim that the Republican Party is the villain when in reality, it's the failed policies of the Democratic Party that have kept blacks down. Massive government welfare has decimated the black family. Opposition to school choice has kept them trapped in failing schools. Fact, fact. The government aid is not a good thing, bro. It's not. Let's just be completely honest here. All right? Full disclosure. It's terrible. Listen, you need to be able to take care of yourself. Right? You have to. You have to do that. As a human being, you should not depend on someone else to take care of you. Um, and when you do that, you then start to get complete and utter laziness. Right? Um, yeah. Family. Opposition to school choice has kept them trapped in failing schools. Politically correct policing has left black neighborhoods defenseless against violent crime. So when Politically correct policing. When you think about racial equality and civil rights, which political party should come to mind? I'm Carol Swain, professor of political science and law at Vanderbilt University for Prager University. What is Prager University, guys? Or at Vanderbilt University for Prager University. Okay. Thanks for watching. Okay. All right. Um. Huh. The video feels like a hit piece, guys. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna remain honest here. I don't. I'm not in. I can tell you right now, I am not caught in any type of echo chamber. I don't care about the left, and I don't care about the right. So, so I don't care. I don't. I just. You guys are the same to me, bro. I'm telling you. You guys are doing the same nonsense. Get rid of them. <laughs> Completely. Please. 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 Um, yeah, guys. The Democrats were absolutely nuts. All right. They are. They are. They, they were. Uh, they were crazier back then. Right. Um, because they were, they were exclusively flooded with the... Mm, some of the some of the worst like anti-human people ever they were at one time they were absolutely flooded with some of the worst anti-human people uh then you know obviously later on in life uh when that switch occurred after the after the civil rights act it was more like a hodgepodge of people right um specifically from the 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 because now they're like, okay, now we have the people that are actually fighting for things. So, for example, the the, the abolitionists were almost mainly, well, they were mainly uh, Republicans, right? They all moved to the Democrat Party. And if you look at how the Democrat Party moves, you'll realize that they are flooded with abolitionists, right? Um, they're still fighting the good fights, in a sense. They're fighting for causes. They're fighting for for people who are some of the smallest groups in the United States of America. They are still being, in fact, abolitionists, okay? Um, that's where they moved to. I don't even know how to, like, it's such a hard conversation to have with some people um, because they're like, oh, the leader of my echo chamber said that this is a myth. Give me the data to back it, bro, okay? Because if we look at it, I can tell you right now that a Republican is more likely, it's, how about this? If you see a Confederate flag, they are more likely to be Republican than anything else, or maybe Libertarian or, so, or something. They're, they're not gonna be Democrat. I can promise, I can almost promise you that, guys, right? Um, and so, and that's just how that always ends up being. And again, the, the whole abolitionist switch, what, what is the, what is the left wing known for right now? Social justice, we're abolitionists, social justice warriors. Okay, that's what they were. Where are they at right now? Are they on, are they on the right, bro? How much? I don't, I, this is a hard conversation to have. Okay, because some people are just so stuck in their echo chamber that they just cannot grasp what's actually happening around them. Then they blame everyone else for saying, oh no, how dare you say this? You have a platform and you say something like that? Bro, I don't live in an echo chamber and I, I literally say what is on my mind almost with no filter. 
But all right, listen. Um, <laughs> so there it goes. My opinion on this video, the inconvenient truth of the Democratic Party. It is an inconvenient truth if you just look at it from that angle. It is. Absolutely. It's crazy. Like, it, it is, they, they did some wild. They did some wildness, bro. They did. Uh, but all right, listen. You guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day thoroughly. Mm -hmm.